Hello. So today I'm talking about my favorite topic, as always, needs. But specifically, I'm talking about something that we've probably all said if we've ever gone through a breakup. And it's this idea that my partner isn't meeting my needs anymore. And I just don't feel that connection. I just don't feel that um, spark or whatever it might be. But really this kind of idea that my partner isn't meeting my needs anymore and it's just not working. It's just not working. And I understand because I think, again, if we've all been through a breakup or a separation, I mean, that is typically what happens, right? It, we, we, get, we come together in a relationship, everything's working out fine. And then over time we realise I'm actually not feeling so great in this relationship. I'm not happy anymore. And really what that boils down to, as many of us will say, my needs aren't getting met anymore. And those needs can be anything, you know, it could be my partner's traveling too much and they're just away and they're absent. And so I don't feel connected to them anymore. And I don't feel that I've got that, that kind of um, intimacy that I, that I need. It might be a lifestyle need that isn't getting met. It might just be that they're not, you know, communicating with you that enough or you're not feeling seen or heard or whatever it is. But this idea that, you know, my partner isn't meeting my needs. And so I need to end that relationship. And I've definitely said this before. I've definitely been in this situation. I know so many people who have gone through this experience. And again, it's pretty universal, I would say. But what I want to kind of look at here is, is that really all that's actually going on? Because it's a very common narrative. And at the same time, there's kind of a couple of presuppositions going on here. One of them is that, first of all, the one of presupposition is that we actually even know what our needs are. Like we know deeply what our needs are. We know them so deeply that we know exactly that they're not getting met. I don't know if that's actually true for most people. And then the other presupposition is that it's my partner's job to meet my needs, which again, I don't know if that's actually true. I mean, I know it's not meant to be true. So they're kind of two things that I've got a bit of an issue with. And when I see people walk away from perfectly valid potential partners or partners saying, well, they weren't meeting my needs or I didn't get my needs met, my heart does break a little bit because I wonder to what extent are they actually right here? And to what extent are they actually missing the boat? And are they actually self-sabotaging? And it's important not to be doing this. If you want to find a partner, and you actually want to have a healthy relationship. We need to drill down into this a little bit more because you don't want to be doing this. I mean, last thing you want is to get into a relationship, get into a marriage five years down the line. You're financially intertwined. You might have children. You have all your assets split, et cetera, et cetera. And you wake up one day and, you know, you're like, well, my needs aren't getting met anymore. So I need to leave. That doesn't seem like the, hey, Carrie, that doesn't seem like the healthiest response or the most kind of sustainable long term response. And so I'm going to talk about two things here. One of them is to what extent do you actually know your needs? Like, I think we all think we know our needs and we all think we know what it is that we want and need in a relationship to be happy. But are those needs actually as granular and as deep as they can go? Because again, my hunch is, and from what I've seen with everyone that I've worked with, with all of the, all the relational work that I've done, they're often just very superficial. The needs that you're aware of, the needs that you're sharing with a partner, the needs that you're potentially leaving a very good relationship over are very kind of surface level, superficial needs that are actually completely missing the mark on what's really going on deep down. And so... When we are operating from that place and we're operating in kind of very, again, superficial space, to what extent is it fair to actually even leave someone? They're not having the opportunity to even meet our real needs because we haven't even got so granular as to know them ourselves as to communicate them to them, right? It's kind of like telling someone, oh, I'm craving a cheese sandwich, but actually you're just hungry. <laughs> That's a really bad analogy. You're just hungry and they don't actually know, like, that you're just hungry. They think you're just craving a cheese sandwich and so they get you some cheese and it's not actually very filling because it's all like 
horrible fast food that doesn't do anything for you and actually you're deeply malnourished and actually need much more nourishment and something much deeper right so you want to get down into the more granular core need which is actually very hard to do again we have so much stuff in our heads from society from cultural conditioning from just even kind of operating in our day to day that we're often we're very disconnected from what we need so again how can you know what they are and how can you actually expect your partner to even know what they are if you don't know what they are and how can you expect them to meet them if again they're just kind of buried there somewhere so deep so what we want to be doing in this instance is getting really clear on our needs and going really really deep and and getting very very explicit about them so that we can again know what they are communicate them clearly and create those healthier deeper connections the second thing is this kind of presupposition that well my partner's job is to meet my needs again according to who since when is it your partner's job to meet all of your needs that's a i, I don't even know where that really comes from yes to an extent your partner is there to help your needs flourish but you have to meet your needs first everyone has to meet their needs first if you're not meeting your needs then you're going to be needy and you're only needy to the extent that you're not meeting your needs right so we have to meet our own needs first and in order to meet our own needs first we have to know what they are and have to know what they are we have to go really deep and we have to be willing to be vulnerable and we have to see things that we might not actually be very comfortable seeing from the get go because they might be a little bit too vulnerable for us they might not be what we want them to be we can't really pick our needs right like they're often instilled in us from childhood and they might not be the coolest or you know kind of the most like i don't know they they would might not just resonate with our image of ourselves but that doesn't really matter because when we're still trying to live on a superficial level and trying to get someone else to meet them for us we're missing the mark completely so what we want to be doing is getting really clear on what they are and meet them for ourselves and this can actually be quite easy so i know i said earlier that it's really hard it's hard to the extent that when we don't know what we're doing it can be a complete mystery but when we do know what we're doing when we do have a clear kind of step by step process and i know when i learned a step by step process to get really clear on like what are my needs why am i feeling this way in my relationship what is it that's not actually getting met here and what is it that i actually need to fulfill within myself so that i'm stop i'm not being needy anymore and so that i can actually communicate much more clearly to my partner at the time and i can i can actually give him an opportunity to help me get them to flourish not expecting him to meet them all entirely because that's completely unreasonable but i'm at least meeting them to 50% and he's stepping in and he's helping kind of nurture the rest but first of all i know what the heck they are and i'm very clear on that and i know again when i learned this methodology and i i kind of got my head around it all everything in my life changed everything in my life changed like truly once i started to understand who i am in my core my career changed literally i moved countries i got very clear on the relationship that i was in and that it wasn't actually the, it actually wasn't the right relationship to be in and so i did indeed leave i got clear on my friendships i got clear on my family dynamics i got clear on everything absolutely everything and everything just changed for the better and so again what we want to be doing is getting to that point of clarity and not just operating on this very kind of superficial shallow level right because that can be very unhelpful and it keeps us disconnected from what's really going on so if you're interested in learning more about how you can transform your you know your whole life for the better and how you can actually go that bit deeper and get to that kind of granular clarity of what's really going on for you what is really driving the deepest kind of um yearnings of you and and what they look like and you can start to begin exploring the meaning for yourself if this is all kind of resonating with you then dm me i mean it's a huge part of my program it's probably my favorite part of the program actually it happens in phase 2 and there's obviously a lot more phases and steps to it it's not kind of like the be all and end all to solving relational issues but it is a pretty huge chunk of it and um i would love to share more with you and give you some actionable steps so dm me if it resonates